starting with a mysterious but and ending with a bang. In this video, we are looking at bizarre ways animals defend themselves. Wombats are chunky boys found in Australia. They spend their free time annoying farmers by digging holes, but are most known for pooping Minecraft blocks. These guys are the Disney moms of nature. Not for their parenting skills, no, but because they've got some serious cake action. But instead of being soft, this ass could probably dent metal. You see, it's filled with cartilage beneath thick, durable skin, creating an almost unbreakable shield. So whenever wombats encounter a predator, they will rush into their burrows headfirst, plugging the entrance with their behinds, greeting the predators with this beautiful sight. So what now, you might ask? Well, it all depends on this guy. The time and energy for the predator to break the butt barrier is often not worth it, leading them to seek easier prey instead. Plus, it probably got pink eye from that fart. The wombat, meanwhile, is more or less stuck, praying for all of this to end. However, they might have the ability to fight back. Numerous predator bodies with crushed skulls have been found near wombat burrows. So it's believed that the wombats are able to counterattack their pursuers by lowering their butts and leaving a little gap. They supposedly bait the predators into the danger zone and go ham. Literally twerking their enemies into the afterlife. The assassin bugs are generalist predators hunting all kinds of insects. But one species, Acanthapes petax, has a particular fondness for ants. Using their sharp proboscis, they inject a toxin that instantly paralyzes their prey and liquefies their insides, allowing them to slurp up all that tasty insect juice, leaving only an empty shell behind. Then, using a sticky secretion, this assassin bug attaches the corpses of their prey to their backs. And they don't stop at just one or two, no. They can carry massive piles of up to 20 dead ants at a time. While this may seem grotesque or cumbersome, it actually helps them survive. First, this wall of ants act like a shield. When predators try to eat them, they end up with a mouthful of dry insects rather than a juicy assassin bug. <coughs> Furthermore, this corpse armor serves as camouflage, helping them blend into their environment. In a 2007 experiment, scientists placed assassin bugs in glass cages together with jumping spiders, their natural predators. Some of them got to carry ants on their back, while others were left naked. And the results? The naked assassin bugs were 10 times more likely to be attacked compared to those with armor. Jumping spiders, which rely on their vision to hunt, really struggled to identify them as food. The corpses are believed to either disrupt the shape of the assassin bug, or worse, make it look like a swarm of ants, which is every spider's worst nightmare. The disrupted shape and camouflage also makes it hard for the prey to spot it, helping the assassin bug sneak up on their prey like a ninja. Boxer crabs are small, colorful crustaceans. In the Hawaiian language, they're called kumimipua, meaning inedible flower crab. A very fitting name, as their most notable feature is using stinging anemones as makeshift boxing gloves. Now, this might seem like a bad deal for the anemone, but it's actually a great example of mutualism, which is a win-win for both animals. The anemones receive protection and an increased flow of food particles as the crab moves around. Additionally, 
They get loads of plankton and taste the debris from the crab's feeding activities. Meanwhile, the crab gains an effective means of defense. It uses the anemones like the pom-poms of cheerleaders to warn approaching threats. If they are dumb enough to ignore this display and get closer, they will be greeted by a very spicy jab to the chin. So not only do these crabs have armor, but armor enchanted with thorns, hurting anyone who gets close by default. Apart from protection, it also uses the anemones like mops to pick up food particles to eat. While eating, the crab will leave the smaller particles for their stinging friends, keeping them healthy. Should a crab lose an anemone, it grabs a new one if available. Otherwise, it just splits the remaining anemone into two, ensuring its defenses stay intact. But despite all of this, the boxer crab can actually survive without its stingy friends. Sometimes going naked or substituting with other random organisms, such as sponges and corals, or even toxic sea slugs, making them the weapons masters of the sea. The tiger moths just want to be left alone, but there's a slight problem. They're on everyone's menu. Birds, lizards, bats, and many other animals think they're absolutely delicious. But you can't really blame them. In their eyes, this moth looks like a... <clears throat> so, in a struggle to survive, these moths develop the ability to fly in random zigzag patterns to evade their pursuers. It helped, but they were still easy to catch. So they became toxic and more colorful as a warning to predators. And it was a good deterrent in most cases. For example, birds that caught these moths showed immediate signs of distaste even spitting them out sometimes. <coughs> However, being colorful and toxic didn't offer much protection in the dark against bats, which hunt using echolocation. So the moths developed the ability to hear this echolocation, allowing them to dodge and weave after detecting the sound waves. But in response, the bat soon had to try a few more times before landing a critical hit. So the tiger moths developed regions of their thorax into specialized clicking organs, giving them the ability to produce sounds of their own. Signaling to the bats. Hey bats, I'm dangerous, don't eat me. But once again, it wasn't long before the flying mammals caught on. They simply ignored the warning sound. But the battle for survival was far from over. Mm. While studying tiger moths, researchers discovered that one species, Bertholia trigona, generated unusually loud clicks. <clears throat> By clicking loudly as soon as they heard the sound of the bats, the two sound waves would collide and mess up the signals the bat receives making it very difficult for them to pinpoint the location of the moths. Over time, the moths have started refining their jamming abilities to match the evolving strategies of bats, such as changing frequencies of their signals. And this ongoing evolutionary arms race will likely continue for thousands of years to come. Known as the Green Bomber Worm or Bombardier Worm, these transparent little guys were discovered by researchers in 2009 using a remotely operated vehicle. They were found at the barren bottom of the ocean, feasting on the bones of a fallen giant. Life is not easy here in the so-called Midnight Zone. It's a realm of total darkness where predators could be lurking just about anywhere. To survive in such a treacherous environment, creatures must rely on more than just their instincts.
To escape these scary boys, the worms have evolved a very clever defense mechanism. Positioned just below their heads are eight sacs filled with bioluminescent fluid. Should they encounter danger, these sacs are ejected like bombs, releasing a burst of green glowing light. This luminous display lasts several seconds effectively distracting predators and granting the worm a chance to escape. Once safe, the worm will regenerate the lost sacks, preparing it to face future threats once again. Interestingly, this tactic also attracts even larger predators that might take care of the attacker. After all, there's always a bigger fish. In sharp contrast to the previous habitats, coral reefs are among the ocean's most colorful, lively places. They are teeming with tropical fish and many other creatures. But every day, as the sun goes down and darkness washes over the reef, the evil side of this place reveals itself. A swarm of blood-sucking isopods comes out to feast. During the day, these parasites are kept in check by the local cleaning crew. Unfortunately, their services are unavailable at night, so the reef's inhabitants have to desperately hide in crevices, huddle together or chill inside stinging anemones. But one fish, the parrotfish, has come up with a genius strategy against this pest. It uses mucus. Each night, they spend an hour secreting a thick, viscous mucus from specialized glands in their skin. This mucus forms a protective cocoon around them, serving as a physical barrier that keeps parasites out and allows them to sleep undisturbed. And some scientists also believe that this cocoon has the ability to mask the scent of the parrotfish, shielding it from predators, sniffing out prey in the dark. Then, come morning, they eat their slimy cocoon to get some energy back. After which, they move on to their daily routine, munching on rocks. Yes, they eat rocks. Autophysis is the process where an animal goes full kamikaze. Let's look at two insects that use this dramatic defense strategy to protect their colonies. First, the Malaysian exploding ants. Their workers have specialized mandibular glands, much larger than those of other ants, running the length of their bodies. These glands are filled with highly viscous poison, referred to as toxic glue. And according to scientists, mm. it apparently smells like curry. As they carry out their duties, the workers stay vigilant for threats. Should an intruder enter their territory, the ants respond aggressively, seizing the invader with their jaws. They then face their butt toward the threat and flex their abdominal muscles with such intensity that their glands burst, unleashing the corrosive glow in all directions immobilizing and eliminating everything in the vicinity. This defense works wonders against other tree-dwelling arthropods, like spiders and weaver ants. But it's also highly effective at teaching bigger animals to leave the colony alone. Lastly, the Terracua termites have an equally, if not more, interesting defense mechanism. Let's follow the life of a random worker termite. Let's call him... Walter. Now, like all workers, Walter is infertile and his main purpose in life 
is to just chew wood all day and keep the colony fed. Over time, his mandibles start to wear down and his work performance declines as a result. At the same time, he begins growing these blue crystals inside a pouch on his back. Strangely, the older and more worn down Walter becomes, the more his crystals grow. Until the day he is finally retired. You might think this means relaxation time. No. Retirement instead means Walter becomes a frontline suicide bomber. You see, the blue crystals that have amassed in his body are part of a secret chemical weapon that lays dormant in the body of every worker. A weapon that can only be used after the workers have worked themselves to the point of no return. As soon as an intruder approaches, the termite's instinct will kick in. Then it happens. Chemistry. Just below the pouch, a gland secretes saliva onto the crystals, causing an explosive reaction. Except... it looks more like this. This blue liquid is not only sticky but also highly toxic. It's over for anything that comes in contact with it. So, there you go. Scratchy scratchy. That's all for today folks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.